And today I'm really pleased to be joined by Andrew Sexsmith. Um, Andrew is a professor in the Department of Gerontology at Simon Fraser University, and he's also the scientific director for AgeWell, the a National Center uh, of Excellence. So, um, Andrew, it's great to have you with us today. I'm really pleased that you could join us. It's my pleasure, Joy. Thank you. So, um, Andrew, I know your um, research focuses on on the um, aging population and particularly um, looks at technologies. Um, and then we know right now that seniors are particularly vulnerable um, in relation to COVID-19. And I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit about how your, res- your research in particular relates to the challenges that seniors face. Particularly seniors are very at risk at the current situation. This has actually sharpened our focus on how technology might be able to help isolated seniors or seniors who are living under the, the current uh, COVID-19 uh, restrictions. First of all, I, want, I just wanted to say there is a lot of heterogeneity within the seniors uh, population. So um, what one group that I always, that comes to mind are people with uh, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, those sort of respiratory conditions where coronavirus to me would be a very, very scary thing uh, if I had that kind of condition right now. So right now, obviously, frail seniors are at risk or seniors with chronic health conditions, but those also who are living in isolation are at risk as well, I would say. There are a lot of isolated seniors. Uh, So social isolation, loneliness is a significant problem for seniors. Um, It's a significant problem across all society. So we've got to bear that one in in mind. Um, So it seems to be part and parcel of our, um, our, our existence in the 21st century. Um, but certainly, you know, if, if you look at figures, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a statistic, a statistic right now that as many as 43% of older adults feel socially isolated. That's quite a, quite a, high, a high number. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know from research that social isolation is a major risk factor for stress, depression, cognitive decline and affects physical health. Um, so those are pretty, pretty clear in the, uh, the research. The, the big take home message that I'm getting right now is that it, we, we need to understand how to respond to people in their complex living scenarios. So, so in, 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 in your research and your work um, with AgeWell, what are some of the solutions that um, you know, you're, you're, you're working on in terms of helping with some of these issues? The aim is of AgeWell is really to, how, to see how we can mobilize technology to support the health and independence and well-being of, of, of seniors. And as I mentioned before, the, the current situation has highlighted the mm-hmm. need for these kinds of uh, solutions. One thing that we're now pushing into the uh, community is a platform called FamilyNet. Mm. So FamilyNet is a very simple, easy to use tablet-based system to allow families with, an old, with a senior um, member in the, in the family who is not familiar with technology to use um, use a, a tablet to to connect uh, with their family to share uh, texts uh, share messages uh, share pictures and communicate that uh, that that kind of thing um, and for people who are not familiar with with using technology there's, there's huge barriers uh, for this so it's, firstly it's got to be easy to use and secondly there needs to be a good business model of how this is going to actually get into the hands of people. And FamilyNet has got, has developed a business model that hopefully will, will, will work. Um, what the, the customer is actually the caregiver. So mm. the caregiver signs up for, for FamilyNet, they get a tablet, they get the, uh, the, they get the app to install on the tablet, and then they, give it to their family member, they either post it to them or, or whatever. And then there's a, a kind of a setup uh, system that allows them to work with the, um, the, the family member to, uh, to, to get it up and running. 
So hopefully that's going to help uh, with, um, with for, for a lot of people. That's terrific. Uh, as I think especially, as you said, to, to keep the technology simple so it can be used um, makes a big difference. Um, so is that rolling out right now, Andrew? Is it? Um... Yeah. So, so it was, uh, it, it's been trialed, it's a team over in Ontario. Um, they've been trialing it for uh, uh, the last couple of years in long-term care facilities okay. uh, quite successfully. And uh, they're now um, in the current situation, uh, they're trying to get that out into the, um, in, in, into the, into the community. Um, because that's where there's a, a big demand right now. I mean, I think these technologies are great and they can really help us communicate, but can they replace that kind of human to human connection that comes when we are in person with our loved ones? You know, what's your thought, what's your thinking about that? That, when I interview and speak to people, um, whether they're older or, or younger, uh, but particularly older, older people that I've sp spoken to, they, that aspect of it is is a concern um especially who people who are already isolated mm -hmm. taking away some of the human contact is would leave them with almost nothing quite often in the age tech sector we hear a lot about um assistive robots okay mm. that, so assistive robots is a big area of research here in, in, in Canada, North America, and, the, and in Europe. Um, okay, yeah, the, sooner or later, we'll have robots that are gonna be able to do things. One thing where robots might work is moving people around, for mm -hmm. example, in, um, in long-term care facilities. Um, we often see people who are immobile because they can't use wheelchairs themselves. They can't use we power wheelchairs. Um, because uh, maybe they have dementia and they, um, they, they can't use it, they can't steer it anymore or whatever. Um, in Agewell, we have a, we have a uh, project um, and, and actually it's now um, a startup uh, who have, um, have a, a system which fits into existing power wheelchairs, which gives a degree of intelligence to the power wheelchair to allow people who might not be able to normally use that power wheelchair to, to get around. Mm -hmm. um, so we can see robotics going into areas that might help to, um, to either with routine activities, say, for example, around a long-term care facility, or in terms of moving people around, those, those sorts of activities. I'm wondering, you know, in your research, um, what really ultimately, um, what, what would you like to uh, achieve ultimately with the kind of work that you and Agewell are doing? I think the practical side of what we're doing is we're, we're obviously funding research in this sector. But I think our broad objective is really to, to drive what we call the age tech sector more broadly uh, across Canada um, and, and bring together those, all, all the various stakeholders that are involved in this process because the the idea that we're going to invent some kind of technology that is just going to transform society mm -hmm. um, that very very rarely happens um it's about using a technology in a new way uh that is going to help people and that's that's a team effort right so so the innovation process um it is, is a very complex process. And that's what we're, that's what we're trying to push along within, uh, with, with it, in Agewell, is to develop this age tech sector. If, if at the end of what we do with Agewell is that we've got a thriving age tech sector in Canada, then we've done our job. That's great. That's great. It's inspiring. I mean, that's uh, what ultimately this series is about, is about change making, um, make, you know, helping, um, you know, to make a difference in society through things like uh, advancing technology for, um, for our aging population. COVID-19 has really highlighted some of the fractures in our yeah. society. And, um, and it's also highlighted the, the great potential that exists within our society. You know, that's, that's a really interesting thing. 
isolated seniors, by definition, are difficult to reach in, in many cases. So how do, we, how do we reach those isolated uh, people um, um, and, and help them with the solutions that we're, we're, we're developing? You know? So I think that there's a big, there's, there's a big requirement from our, for, our, for our government, provincial and federal, to really understand some of these problems. And I think one of the things that I detect with the seniors population is that there is still a systematic and structural ageism that exists within mm -hmm. society. Well, um, I'm certainly aware of the fact that we are all aging and, uh, <laughs> and, and we all have a vested interest in making sure we can get this right um, so that we can, we can appropriately um, support our family, but also that we, as we age, will be appropriately supported. So really interesting work, Andrew. Really appreciate it. Uh, I've re the conversations today has been um, fascinating. I'm really pleased to hear that um, organizations like AgeWell are networking as well and partnering to, to get this work done. I think it bodes well for the future. All our projects have to have community partners, industrial partners that, are, uh, that, that contribute in a meaningful way to their, uh, to their uh, projects. Um, and, uh, and hopefully that model will lead to things that are actually going to have real world impact. That's great. So thank you so much, um, Andrew, for taking time with me today. I really, really appreciate it. I want to thank viewers for joining us as well. Um, and I invite you to stay tuned and join us next week when I interview another SFU researcher on their work related to COVID-19. We'll see you again soon.